Fifth Estate. Tonight on the Fifth Estate. September 11th, 2001, the most scrutinized day in history. Two of the most recognizable buildings in the city of New York have been attacked. And then the entire top of the building just blew up. But eight years later, there may be more questions than ever. I do not believe that it was 19 guys with box cutters taking orders from Osama bin Laden in some cave in Afghanistan. An increasing number of people now believes the U.S. government was behind it from the Twin Towers. Now how many of you knew on 9-11 that these towers uh, were brought down by explosive controlled demolition? This is really, really a problem for the official story. We've pulled the rug out from under the official story and by... Tonight, call it conspiracy theory of the search for truth, we're gonna ask why is this happening? What are the unanswered questions and unresolved issues that have allowed these alternative 9-11 theories to thrive? Because one thing is certain, the people who believe them aren't going away anytime soon. It is the eighth anniversary of September 11th, and at Ground Zero, New York firefighters gather to remember more than 300 colleagues who perished. Every year they come to ensure that what happened here won't be forgotten the worst attack on American soil since Pearl Harbor. At that very moment, there's another gathering in Lower Manhattan to mark 9-11. Not to keep its history alive, but to demand the truth about what these people believe really happened that morning. The truth they maintain the U.S. government has kept hidden ever since. They call themselves the 9-11 Truth Movement. Truthers, some call them. Please give a warm, we are changed welcome to Mr. Richard Gates, EIA. Their guest of honor tonight is the man who's become one of the leaders of the movement, Richard Gage. What? <laughs> Thank you. He doesn't look like an anti-establishment lightning rod. In fact, for 20 years, Gage was a mild-mannered architect in San Francisco who bought into the official story. Now here I was looking at an explosion of the World Trade Center Twin Towers in the morning of 9-11, and the experts are telling me this is a gravitational collapse due to structural weakening by fire. What did I know? I had never seen a building come down like this before, these Twin Towers. It's a very explosive event, as it turns out. Uh, but in retrospect, I, I didn't know what a, a high-rise gravitational collapse looked like because there had never been one. Then, five years after 9-11, Gage heard something on the car radio that would change his life. This is Guns and Butter. It is not difficult to see that the official account of the World Trade Center cannot be true. It was David Ray Griffin who's been called the guru of the 9-11 Truth Movement. Steel frame high-rise buildings have never collapsed except when they have been brought down by explosives in the process known as controlled demolition. It was like I was hit by a two-by-four uh, three and a half years ago. I could not believe that here's this set of evidence which is so clear uh, to, to me and to so many people but that the large majority, the vast majority of architects and engineers were completely unaware of it, not having seen it on mainstream media. It's as, it's as if there's a, a curtain drawn over the story of the evidence of 9-11 and the world, destruction of these three World Trade Center high-rise collapses. He has quit being an architect and has become a full-time uh, proselytizer of the 9-11 Truth Movement. Jonathan Kay of the National Post is writing a book on 9-11 truth, including Richard Gage. He's proud of standing up for what he regards as the truth. Uh, and people call him a conspiracy theorist, but it, it doesn't matter to him. He, he really believes he's fighting for the truth. And if people in his industry mock him, it doesn't bother him. Please put your hands together and welcome San Francisco Bay Area architect, Richard Gage, AIA. Another day, another chance to spread the word, building the case that for reasons of physics and structural engineering, destruction of the Twin Towers must have been intentionally done, not with planes, but explosives. 
This particular project has proven to be one of the most difficult, and not difficult in terms of reaching conclusions, however, but difficult in terms of the implications of those conclusions. For Gage, Exhibit A is how those buildings fell. United Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower at the 78th story and above. It is 56 minutes later. Watch as the floors at the impact point begin to crumble and pitch forward. Then, with the rest of the building, they plummet more or less straight down at up to free fall speeds. In other words, with little resistance whatsoever from below. It all takes just nine seconds. The only way that a building can fall for 100 feet of its fall uh, at free fall acceleration in the first two and a quarter seconds uh, is to have those columns removed and all at once. There's nothing driving the rest of the building down after that, that upper section has destroyed itself. It's tearing itself apart at free fall acceleration. And the concrete and the gypsum board in this building, almost all of it, is being pulverized in mid-air to talcum powder almost. About half an hour after the South Tower fell, the North Tower suddenly collapsed as well, it too seemingly imploding onto its own footprint in about 11 seconds. Again, not much slower than freefall. Richard Gage insists there's only one plausible explanation for the speed, symmetry and totality of the collapses. Explosives detonating floor by floor, horizontally expelling squibs of debris. It's the building tearing itself apart at free fall acceleration nearly, hurling 20 ton perimeter wall units to 600 feet away. The only way those can be uh, landed at 600 feet away is to be expelled with instant acceleration out of the side of the Twin Towers at 50 to 70 miles per hour. What force can create that? According to Richard Gage, there's no doubt what it all means. 9-11 did not happen the way we have been told it happened. Flowing like lava, the first responders said. Richard Gage maintains there is evidence of something else, discovered in the pulverized concrete of the destroyed Twin Towers. Microscopic globules of molten iron. Why would that be important? These tiny microspheres have in them the chemical evidence of thermite, iron oxide, aluminum, manganese, uh, many of them sulfur. So th this is clear evidence because this is an incendiary that becomes explosive. The thermite Richard Gage refers to is a combination of aluminum powder and metal oxide that can generate vast amounts of heat when ignited. Gage insists the presence of thermite at the World Trade Center site can mean only one thing, that it was used to sever the columns in towers one, two, and seven as part of a controlled demolition. Yet the federal government agency responsible for analyzing the collapse of those buildings admits it never even tested for thermite. Now, according to Gage, in the Trade Center dust, they've also found residue of nanothermite, a kind of super thermite. Perfect, he says, for covert implosions. Well, if you were trying to perform a deceptive controlled demolition, you wouldn't use traditional high energy explosives like C4 and RDX, which have loud bangs and bright flashes. Super thermite does not have the loud bang, bang and the bright flashes that uh, these uh, normal uh, explosives do for explosive controlled demolition. After a three year investigation, the report by NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, found no evidence of explosives at the Twin Towers and made no mention of thermite. As for building number seven, NIST says uncontrolled fires on multiple floors caused the failure of a critical support column, then a progressive collapse. Your dismissal of that is that it couldn't have happened in the uniform way that would be necessary for the building to fall the way it did. Correct. The rest of the columns could not have been destroyed sequentially uh, so fast to bring this building straight down into its own footprint like a house of cards. All the structural members, or most of them, had to have been cut in order for a 47-story building to collapse into a pile four, five stories high. 
It's at the heart of this fundamental disagreement about the most crucial day in modern American history. Well, three and a half years ago, virtually everyone I talked to thought I was nuts. Well, I would say uh, 90 to 80 to 90 percent. Now it's only like 30 to 40 percent. And we have given uh, hundreds and hundreds of architects the truth. Since 2006, through speeches and the internet, Richard Gage has recruited about 900 architects and engineers to his cause. But some of the most troublesome questions that remain have little to do with things like structural design or physics. If you've wired these buildings for controlled demolition, why would you need airplanes? If you got the bombs, why couldn't you have just blamed that on the Iraqis and, and Al-Qaeda? Well, we have the evidence for explosive controlled demolition. You're asking me to speculate. Every time the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth speculate and veer away from the evidence, it's the speculation that's used to try an attempt to invalidate the evidence. So that's why we do not speculate as to these kinds of questions. Again, if what you say is true, would, would all of this not definitively involve so many people? Oh, Dozens, clearly. hundreds, thousands of people that the odds so many years later of keeping the lid on it would be infinitesimal. How the lid was kept on at least dozens and dozens of people being responsible for this black ops operation, which is all you can really call it, is not the purview of the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. The evidence itself warrants a real investigation which will lead to how they might have gotten away with it and who they are.